Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Isaac. And this is your boy, Bryce. And we are Brothers on Tennis. And folks, we have finished and wrapped up yet another Wimbledon Championships. Bryce, oh, I'm, I love the grass, Bryce. I love the grass. I'm going to miss <laughs> Wimbledon. It was a, a really interesting tournament. <laughs> and, and we got a lot to talk about, don't we? <laughs> we really do. I mean, this... Yeah, Wimbledon can have an asterisk by it today for a whole bunch of reasons. <laughs> Say it now. A Say it now. A whole bunch of reasons. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to keep this pretty close to the results. But the after show today on mm. IG Live mm. is going to be fun. fine. So y'all. if you are listening to this on, on the podcast and you're not listening live, of course, go to Instagram, look up our IG live that we record tonight and listen to that. I have a feeling it's going to be fire. (laughs) (laughs) And I have a feeling that you are right, sir. Yes. (laughs) Oh, wow. So anyway, let's talk about, we did our last week when we did our mid fortnight review Yes. And we kind of readjusted a few things. Um, so let's see how things wound up. So let's start with mixed doubles. Yes. And I know, Isaac, we were very, very excited um, about the pairing of Jack Sock and Coco Golf. Yes, and we were. They were looking really good last week, but... They ran up against Ebden and Stoser in that semifinal, and that, that was a heck of a match. Right, right. Really, really strong match, man. They went, you know, anytime you can go the distance, go three sets. Um, mm-hmm. And again, all sets were respectable. Um, yeah, yeah. They 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 played real strong, but unfortunately, the Aussies had a little some extra for the USA this time around. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, Isaac, I wanted to ask you, did you see the same thing I did um, in that match? And I don't know if it's because of the kick that Stoser has on her serve, uh, but that was the first doubles match that they had had that week where it appeared to me that Coco really struggled with the forehand again. Right, right. I, I actually think that was a lot to do with it because Sam does have a very, very strong serve. One of the best, actually. Um, because when she was in her heyday, let's not forget that she is a Grand Slam singles champion. Um, mm-hmm. That serve is strong. And so she can get a lot of good kick on it. And if it's going into Coco's forehand, like I said, we we know that Coco is 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 having some struggles as it relates to just kind of locking in that forehand on a consistent basis. So, yeah, I, I absolutely believe what you said, bro. I think it caused her some problems. Yeah, but. Overall, I mean, they lost to a very strong team. They they lost to a Grand Slam winning team. Um, and I personally, I want to see them pair up again for the U.S. Open. I, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I honestly think that they, having played together, probably learned a good bit about one another and their playing styles. And I feel like if they get on hard court and they bring that same level – I think that they will definitely contend and potentially win that championship. Yeah, because it looked like they had a lot of fun playing together. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So Ebden and Stoser moved on to the finals where they met uh, Britt Neil Skupski and American Desiree yes. Krychek. Yep, Krychek. Uh, yeah, and the American and the Brit won four and three. Yes, they did, man. Was really happy. Happy that the states got, you know, got a little something, something out of all of this. Um, so that was really good to see. So always happy for her and Skubsky. You know, we both like him. So it was, it was, it was good. I, in in that one, I don't know that I really had any issue with either team because I do like Ebden and Stozer as well. Yeah. So yeah, in that one, I was like, hey, may the better pairing win. Right. I, I totally agree with you. I, and I love Ebden. And, and Ebden and I have chatted uh, several times in um, 
uh, on Instagram. So Matthew, if you're listening to this, good on you. Can um, you know, congratulations on making it to the finals of the mix. And we're gonna talk about you again a little bit later. I think uh, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I agree with you, Isaac. I could have been happy with either one of those teams winning. Yeah, good stuff. So let's keep it moving mm-hmm. and let's take it to. Well, let's just take it to one of the ones where we told you so. Ladies doubles. <laughs> yes. I mean, if look, if Sydney Akiva and Krajicova are playing their game, they just simply are the best women's doubles team in the world. I, I would agree with that. Yep, I would agree. You yeah, know, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, Grant, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, they are just... They're in sync. They know each other's, you know, strong points, and they play to them extremely well. Extremely well. They do. Uh, I mean, Krachikova has the solid ground strokes and return of serve, and Sydney Akiva, she's just all over the net. She's just wild. She's just all over the net and just – but I love her energy. I love yeah. all that fire that she brings because she's just – you know, you never know what she's going to do, and I think that that helps them in in her being a wild card like that. Mm-hmm. That's help- yeah, I, I I really like that pairing, Bryce. They they are they are mm-hmm, yeah, they are awesome. And it's funny because I was talking to our friend David, and I was telling him, I said, "Oh, Krachikova and Siakam are going to win." He said, "Well." They're the number two seed. They're playing the number one seed. I said, at least Mertens is not about to win this one. <laughs> I'm just going to <laughs> Just that going to happen. Say, so just simply put, that is not going to happen. I mean, she 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 tries and she gets there. But yeah, yeah it's, uh, there's always a little bit of something that holds holds her game back. And, you know, she's partnered with a lot of different people as well. So I think she's I feel like her heyday was when she was partnered, of course, with um, with Big Sab. Um, I, yeah, Sabalenka. I think that both of them together, that was now that was a pairing that could compete with Sinyakova and Krajkova. Right. That to me, that was the matchup. But unfortunately for Mertens, you know, Big Sab was like, look, I got to go focus on these singles right now. So I'm going to I'm I'm douche you out. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. you know, but hey, kudos to Mertens again for finding a, a a partner, being the number one seed and making it to the final. So they did live up to their seeding. Unfortunately, they just did not win the title. Exactly. Exactly. So like we said, told you so when it came to uh, ladies doubles. <laughs> now, let's talk about these men's doubles. Woo. And Isaac, I have to admit. So once again. I was like, okay, this is another one of our told you so. We said, mm-hmm. Tim Povich, you know, we always rolling strong with them. Yes. But I did not know. And clearly Ebden and Purcell knew. Ebden, shame on you. Um, <laughs> I did not know that Povich had a fractured wrist. Yes. Yes, he did. And all I noticed was they were going at him exclusively. All day. Net. All day. And I'm like, y'all are playing some hood tennis. <laughs> y'all are really playing some hood tennis. Y'all are really trying to break this. Break this <laughs> <laughs> so ghetto, but I, but you know. Hey, bro, it's a Grand Slam final. You got to do what you got to do. And, and quietly, with all of that being said, they right. went the distance. How right. ridiculous is that? that? Look, that shows you how good Mektich and Pavage are. Pavage like, I can have a broken... You know how people say, I'll beat you with one hand tied behind my back? <laughs> right? Pavage was like, look, I'll come out there with a broken wrist. Yes. And we will go 7-6 in the fifth. Yes. He was like, I mean, I meant that. Don't, don't get it twisted. <laughs> I am not sitting here about to give y'all a Wimbledon championship. We're going to fight for this. Right. Bryce, I, you talk about somebody who was just ridiculously impressed. I, as much as, and, and like I said, I like the Aussie pairing. Of course, we know mm-hmm. we talked about Ebden. I, I like them a lot, but boy, oh boy, was I standing on my couch trying to root 
to get <laughs> Metic and Pavic over that finish line. Because I was like, if y'all win the most prestigious yep. doubles title yep. in all of tennis, and my dude got a broke wrist, <laughs> listen, that is another level. Listen, y'all, that's another level. <laughs> That's almost like winning a grand slam when you're pregnant. Right? <laughs> That's some goat-ish. What? That's some goat-ish. Don't get it twisted. Right, oh, right. Bryce. Yeah, I, w- I was rooting for them so hard. And, and, and you know, they, they came close. But unfortunately, when they got to that, uh, that uh, super tiebreaker, right. man. Ebden and Purcell just broke it open. They were just like, nah, slick. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> you should have got us when you had them uh them, them three match points. Because you know they did have three match points. Um and and that that's on them. They couldn't couldn't close them out. And that unfortunately was their 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 downfall because they needed to close it out right then and there. Right. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. But but seriously, uh, I, I totally feel what you're saying, because it made me feel even almost better about Mektich and Pavic. Exactly. Because yep. you are healthy Mektich and Pavic would probably roll these dudes. Ooh, <laughs> right? <laughs> be like, y'all just barely beat us. What? Right. And, and and once again, we love Ebden. Shout out to you, Matt, for, I mean, getting you the title in men's doubles and being a finalist in the mixed doubles. That's right, brother. You get them coins. That's what that is. That's get coins. them coins. Yeah, because you sure ain't get no points for it. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you got a couple bags out of that. And, That's and right. That's nice. He got a baby on the way, so, you know, go ahead and put that away. That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Well, but no, I, kudos like I said, kudos to them and mm-hmm. and and like I said, it it, it just increased my if, if, if affinity for Metkic and Pavis. The fact that yep. they got out there and battled in that manner and went yep. the distance knowing that they were dealing with that significant of an injury it, it, that is, Bryce, that is such baller status. I am sorry. That is baller status, y'all. Right. Oh, you got to love those guys. Got it. And, and by the way, in case you're listening, Mate Pavic, thank you for finally accepting our uh, our request uh, to follow you. <laughs> what, what's going on? What's taking so long? <laughs> right? You know? He's like, well, you know, my wrist is, you know, my wrist all kind of messed up, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> but he did approve us to follow him. So shout out to you, Mate. <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're going to have to go after the pairing because, man, I would love to talk to them about that match and specifically. And just, oh, again, how dominant God. they've been. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's take it down to these last two events real quick. Um, All right. Ladies singles. Yes. And, you know... We were really okay, Jabur. We had called mm-hmm. that one that she was gonna yes. be in the finals. Yes, but we, we were right on that one. We was definitely right on that, but we thought Halep was coming through on that other side. Right. Oh, I did. Right. Well, or at least I did. I forgot what you said. No, no, no. I did say Halep. Yep. You and I <laughs> were both aligned there. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and so we get Rabakana. Up in the finals. And honestly, how did you feel, Isaac? Because for me, I was kind of like, hmm, Jabur's been the hot girl out here. Right. 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 But we've been talking about Rabakina for a minute. Long time, bro. Long time. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, if she play the way she been playing, I don't know. She might upset Jabur. So what did you think? Uh, bruh, like I said, you know, we two peas in the pod. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, if Rabakina plays up to her potential, she will win that match. And that's 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 where I was. I was like, she has enough firepower to be able to push Jabur around. And and that was to me the biggest point. And is, is she going to be able to hold her nerve? And is she going to be able to, you know, just just really 
hit her strokes the way that we all have seen that she can do. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like a couple of things happened, Bryce. One thing I, ha- I feel like happened is Jabur had control of that match. She played a fantastic first set, really mm-hmm. great first set, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. What I feel honestly happened, Jabur got comfortable. <laughs> Jabur, because, and the reason I say that, Bryce, is because she went away from her tactic. If you look at the first set versus the second set, all she was doing was throwing slice, 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 keep it low, bring her in, do a lob, pass. She was doing all of that to an exquisite level in the first set. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, she decided in the second set, well, I'm just going to hit with her. Baby girl, you can't hit with Rebecca. <laughs> she got way too much power for you. And she went away from her slicing and dicing. And when she did it, it wasn't as effective because she wasn't doing it as much. And then what ended up happening, in my opinion, is Rebecca got her confidence and was like, yep. oh, well, wait a minute. Yep. Okay, if we're going to do this, now we're playing a little bit more of my game. This is what I like. And we yep. went into the third set. And if you saw that, Bryce, Jabur tried to go back and do some of the slicing in the third set. But by that time, Rabakina was grooved. She was like, Shh. she was like, my game is tight right now. Sis. <laughs> my game is tight. And 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 Jabur was just like, oh, snap. I done let this, I done let this one up in here. And she confident. Now she's swinging out. Right. And to me, that's what happened, bro. If you got something that's working, y'all. <laughs> right. Work it till the wheels fall off. Don't oh. go away from it. No, right. make them prove that you that they that you have to then move away from it. And to me, Rabakina did not do that. Jabur made the choice to try and hit with her in that second set. And to me, that is what, in my opinion, turned that match. What, what were your thoughts on it, bro? Let me let me shut up and let and you share your thoughts. Well, I I'm gonna take everything that you said and use that as the foundation for me. Okay, and okay. just kind of add to that, you know, although this was like the first final for both of them, mm-hmm. you know, Jabur really was kind of like the more experienced one in many ways. Right. And so I think that came through in the first set. And I think Rubakino was really nervous. Yes. In that first set. So once that first set got done, I think those nerves kind of started to dissipate. Mm-hmm. And she got more comfortable. And if you notice, she started anticipating. Right. More like those drop shots that were winning in the first set. She already had a good foot on, <laughs> on those drop shots come the second set. That's right. And and I think everything else you said, you know, was right on. You know, once her confidence got up and you know, she started putting her back into them shots, you know, she was good. Right. And she was like, you really don't have nothing to hurt me. Exactly. Exactly. And 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 I think the final thing was she just was like, you know, Ons, you know, I know you've been over on this grass in a long, you know, for a long time, but I think there's this bakery around the corner that you hadn't seen yet. <laughs> and I just want to take you over there because I, I think they got something for you over I there. I think they got something. Come on now. And she was like, try it. Not just one whole biscuit. You got to have two. Got to have two. You got to have two now. whole biscuits. Got to. And, um, <laughs> and then, so you just had, you had Jabir just sitting there chomping on them whole biscuits. <laughs> At that point, <laughs> it was a done dizzle. So. Done dizzle, bro. Uh, so, like you, Bryce, I mean, I think both of us are both fans of both of these young ladies. Yes. Um, and, you know, the fact that, again, Jabur is, a, you know, a, per- a woman of color and she's doing so many wonderful things, you know, for her country and, and for little young, you know, uh, the kids. And, I, I, you know, we definitely want that to continue and, 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 and wish her the best on that. Um, so from that standpoint, it is good that, again, she got to that final, played her first final. Um, but like like we were talking about, bruh, we've been kind of rocking with Rubakina for a long time. And to me, this is this to me was something that was coming. It was coming. I am so happy for it. And I love the fact because you come know, on now. You know me. You know, 
<laughs> Ain't nothing like a little irony, right? Right. Come on now. <laughs> I love the fact that the whole reason hmm. Wimbledon wanted to ban these Russian and Belarusian players is because they didn't want royalty to be handing the championship to a Russian. Yep. What, they what happened, Bryce? What they what do? happened? Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Kate did a little two step up there and, <laughs> and and handed off that trophy that Venus uh what is it? White water Rosewater Rosewater? Rosewater, whatever it's called, this to a Russian. That she sure did. And yeah, don't get it twisted, folks. While while Rabakina is listed under Kazakhstan, she is Russian born. She resides in Russia. She just simply plays for Kazakhstan because they were the ones that were willing to give her money and sponsorship yep. for her early tennis years. But she yep. is Russian. Yep. She uh-huh. is very good. So I think the irony of that is just hilarious. Hilarious. Completely. Hilarious. I was rolling. I was just sitting there like, now look at this. Look at this. Everything that y'all set out there to try and do then simply backfired on you. You should have just left it alone like everybody was telling you to do yep. and just have a regular Wimbledon. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with having them Russians there because, again, it's not like they are representing Putin and that whole war. They are individual entrepreneurs for the most part. So, yeah, it was just a bad move on Wimbledon's part, and I think we've talked about that in 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 depth <laughs> right i mean you you have you had Hatchinoff and karatsev and rublev all up they had a little they had a little wimbledon party up in there talking about can't stop won't stop, <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they was working it out <laughs> Pop a check of a back in the kitchen and talk about, I can't stand one <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah, I'm telling you, that, that's hilarious to me. It's too funny. And you hit it spot <laughs> on, bro. Yeah, it's I, irony. Irony. The irony of it all. Crazy. Of it all. So, <laughs> okay, then. We're we going to get off of that. because <laughs> we, We'll continue that on the IG Live. I got some other things to say about that. Oh, yeah. But, okay, let's Let's take it to the big boys here, right? All right. So, I, so Isaac, let me just say this. So when my heart got broken because, you know, Nadal's guts were ripped up and, you know, he couldn't play and he didn't have whatever that magic potion is that you <laughs> got where you can play <laughs> got ripped up guts. But right. <laughs> he, when he couldn't when he got hurt, I actually was kind of happy that he withdrew because I was like, Kyrgios is the type of guy that can go and take Jack Djokovic out. Like, if I had to come up with a short list of people that I would mm-hmm. want with Djokovic in the finals, Kyrgios would be on that list. Absolutely. Right? Agree. What was driving that thought for me, Isaac, was that Kyrgios couldn't stand Djokovic. The hatred. <laughs> and we know how he plays when he can't stand somebody. It, 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 come, come on, preach. Come on. And then the media starts reminding me that he done become one of Djokovic's rah-rah boys. Oh, my goodness. When, and when, I said, yes. I, 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 just, I, I just said, in my mind, I, I want Kyrgios to win, but in my mind at that point, I knew he wasn't going to win. I, I t- you and I are, like I said, we are two peas, bro, because <laughs> at that point, that's my exact emotion. When that whole thing came out and they did the little press conference and he was like, yeah, you know, we we text and blah, 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 and it's a little bit of a bromance. When he said that, I was like, he about to lose. <laughs> <laughs> he about to lose because mm-hmm. Kyrgios plays his best tennis yep. when he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's angry about something. Yep. That's when the best Nick Kyrgios comes out. Mm-hmm. And when they started talking about all the lovey dovey, uh, and first of all, and we, we, nah, we're not going to take it here on this podcast, but that little support that he gave Djokovic earlier in the year at the Australian. Yep. It, it, they said that. And I was just kind of like, you know what? He going to lose. 
they gonna mm-hmm. lose. Yeah. And, and you know what? When he came out and he won that first set and played, oh, I thought he played a really good first set. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the things that I had told one of my friends was the thing because my friend was saying, oh, you know. Djokovic gonna have to deal with his serve, and he gonna have to deal with this, and he gonna have to deal with that. And I said, you know what? I'm not even worried about that. I'm worried about a baby crying in the third row. <laughs> yep. Worried about a time call. Yep. I'm worried about a chair umpire. Yep. Those are the types of things that I am worried about. And Isaac, mm-hmm. when he in the second set. Not even in the second set. Well, at least going into it. And he's he's chirping. Chirp, 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 chirp. That's what I call it. Chirp, chirp, chirp. And it, it, it you just get to a point where you're just like, bruh, do you not even understand how much energy you are wasting yep. with all the chirping? I mean, that and, and I don't know about you, Bryce. Now, first of all, let me just put this out there for my own for my own opinion. This mm-hmm. was an outstanding match. Them boys oh, yeah. played some great tennis for mm-hmm. those four sets. Yep. Could Nick have won? Yes, he could have. But I honestly feel like Nick, like you were just saying, too many of the little, little distractions. And kudos to Djokovic for recognizing that. Mm-hmm. Because if you notice, when Nick would get his most flustered, Novak just took his little time. He bounced that ball six, seven, eight, nine times. He's like, I'm going to let him implode. And every time he was chirping at his box and, whoa, 40 love, 40 love. Why don't y'all love it, 40 love? It's like, are you really serious right now? Yep. Focus on the match, bruh. You are in the Wimbledon finals. And you sit yep. up there chirping at your box. There was apparently some lady he was saying that had 700 drinks in the third <laughs> row. <laughs> I'm like, bruh. Focus on the. You are in a Grand Slam final, and you letting these little things, little little itty bitty things, and, and like I said, get to you, and then you're spending all of this energy. And in my opinion, he got tired in that four set because if you notice, there were certain shots that Djokovic hit, he didn't run for. Uh-uh. He and didn't you, run for. And you know what else, Isaac? I forgot after what set it was when Djokovic went and took the break. You know how typically when somebody is leading, they're not the one to take the break? Right, right. But he knew. He, he knew. the break, and, and Kyrgios would sit there and stew. Stew. Let it fester. Mm-hmm. Come on. Yep. And and just he Djokovic played Kyrgios like a fiddle. Uh, I wish I had a fiddle so I could play it right now. Because you're right. <laughs> he did, bro. I mean, you are, you're calling it, man. He played him. And that's what the greats do. They understand yep. any little weakness that they can get, they are going to pounce on it. And that's what he wasn't ready for. And I, I appreciate what your friend was saying that, oh, Joe Fitz got to deal with all this from Nick. And what they forget, though, is Nick also has to deal with all that Djokovic is bringing to the mm-hmm. table as well. Let's not yep. forget that he got 20 grand slams. We're now 21. So 21. it ain't like he bringing, you know, what, uh, <laughs> you know, what PCB or somebody else is bringing to the court. He bringing some, he's bringing a lot. And, and, and so I don't think that Nick really was ready for everything that Novak was bringing on the court that day. Because remember, he had never even taken a set off of Nick Kyrgios before this match. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the first set here. Yep. Yep. So that that's what the greats do. That they they figure out what it is that you know, what's your kryptonite and they will use it and pounce on it. And to me Djokovic, like you said, played it played him like a fiddle. He did. Man. And so um now to speak you know, about something positive about Kyrgios. When was the last time somebody made it to a Grand Slam final without a coach? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You you got to give the boy his his props. I mean, serious, serious props. Nick is a talent, and, and I think everybody recognizes that. Mm-hmm. He is a talent. He is a true talent. He He could be one of the greatest 
sports people in the in 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 the game. Right. But he chooses to take a different path. And 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 hey, that's that's your call. Like mm-hmm. we've talked about with Djokovic. Djokovic is choosing his own path. Yep. Y'all y'all make them choices. That's that's on y'all. But if you're really looking at just talent alone, Nick is Nick is a beast. He's he ridiculous. Is. Yes, he is. It's I mean, it, that serve, the hands at the net, the creativity. Yep. That, and you know what? I don't know if he gets enough credit for that backhand. I, I, I completely agree. It may look like a little shovel backhand, but that backhand is effective, y'all. Don't, <laughs> yeah. don't, don't get it twisted. I feel like him and Tiafo have very underrated backhands. Right. They hit a very, it may look like a little, and I'll put Cam Nori in that, in that, in that one as mm-hmm. well. They don't look the best. They look like they're just strictly a shovel, but man, oh man, are those backhands, uh, they they are tight, man. They are tight. And and and, let, and let's 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 think about this too. You know, you know, after the match, Nick is feeling like you know he's in a good headspace, and like you know he lost to you know one of the goats, and you know he's very proud of his accomplishment, and you know so I'm you know that's really cool. As we come around to the U.S. Open, and we know Roger's not going to be there, right? We know Rafa's not going to be there. Is looking like Djokovic isn't going to be there. Right. If Nick is playing like this, you have definitely got to throw his hat in the ring. You have to. As yep. a strong contender. Strong, yeah, because he won't be afraid of any of the new guns. Even Med... Med, Med, uh, uh, Med oh, good Lord. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, Medvedic. No, it's Medvedev. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking two players' names and combining them. No, he exactly. He is not going to be afraid of anybody else in that field. Anybody else. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on what Nick Kyrgios decides he wants to do for the rest of the year. Because okay. if he stays focused like this, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, I, I put him as a very, very strong contender based on what we saw at Wimbledon. Mm-hmm. As long as he don't get arrested for domestic abuse. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That's all, all right, Zverev. <laughs> all right, Mr. Billy. Right. Does the ATP have a problem? <laughs> right. Come on now. <laughs> no, they say things happen in threes. Apparently, that's one of them. Right. That new logo gonna be a fist. <laughs> 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 the, the new slogan for the ATP. You don't want none of this. You don't want none of these hands. <laughs> so anyway. Yes. Yes. But shout out to Djokovic. Hey, I mean, but you know, hey, everybody that listens to the show knows that we're not the biggest Djokovic fans, but we absolutely acknowledge how great he is. And I mean, absolutely. he just once again showed why he is one of the greatest players of all time. That's I mean, right. he gets it done. And Isaac, you've always said this, but I heard one of the commentators say it. Um, maybe they heard you. Um, <laughs> you know, Djokovic equals clutch. Clutch. That's it. That's you it. Know? He knows how to get it done, y'all. I mean, he just, he has scratched his way in that mix of things. Because again, it was always the Roger Nadal show. And mm-hmm. Djokovic scratched his way right up in there and said, "No, no, no, no. This will be a threesome. Y'all not gonna, y'all not gonna <laughs> exclude me. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it clear." Right. And it, again, he is clutch. He knows how to get things done when they need to happen. And and we've got to we've got to give him his flowers for that. I mean, like yeah. it's like Bryce said, we may not be the biggest Djokovic fans, but what he does in between the lines is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's spectacular, y'all. Right. Right. It really is. Um, so, so man, I mean, like all in all, you know, for the way that the championship started off, you know, with the banning of the players and the stripping of the points and, uh, you know, all of the craziness, you know, it, you know, it still was a very strong and entertaining tournament. Absolutely agree, bro. I, on, on, on all the fronts, I think on the doubles front, mixed doubles, ladies, guys i think all, all of the draws had their really really high points and and it was really enjoyable to watch i'm i got an interesting question going into the u.s open all right 
I'm going to be very interested to see what Coco Golf does. Because I don't believe Coco Golf is going to play singles, women's doubles, and mixed doubles. Right, right. And, you know, we, we've kind of joked a little bit about the whole women's double situation between Katie McNally and Jessica Bagula. <laughs> but the, who knows? The answer for Coco might be like, neither. <laughs> I'm going to go over here and roll with Jack Sock. <laughs> yep. I mean, let us not forget, you know, when we talk about our queens, what were the first Grand Slams that they won? I'm pretty sure it was mixed doubles, wasn't it? Mixed doubles, yeah. So, yeah. you know, maybe that's maybe that needs to be Coco's path. Maybe she needs to get over that hump with getting a mixed doubles Grand Slam that then gets her path right for not only doubles, but for the her singles game. Never know. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be interesting to watch. I agree. I agree. But yeah, like you said, I think there's a little bit of, you know, there's it's definitely something interesting as far as women doubles goes, because if you're looking at success, she should be she should be playing with Pagula. Right. But if you're looking at history, she should be playing with McNally because they came up in the juniors. They're great, you know, great friends, that whole thing. So it's like, OK, what what do you do from a Coco Golf camp? I don't know. That's a messy one. That's messy. Right. It's messy. Who knows? Maybe she comes with women's doubles on the U.S. swing and plays with Taylor Townsend. It, hey, she exactly. Throw another little twist in there. Why not? <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So, so we wrap this one. We put it in the books. We know that we have the whole Hall of Fame tournament going on this week. But basically, after that, we hit the hard courts. That's right. Summer hard court season is upon us, y'all. Yeah. And uh, this is going to be, uh, I think, a very good season. And I'm going to tell you what. Watch out for the Russians and the Belarusians. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I think, you know, granted, they didn't lose any points, you know, thank goodness to the WTA and, and ATP with Wimbledon. But still, when you've been excluded because of basically discrimination. Uh, mm -hmm. When you come back, yeah, watch out for all of them. Exactly, because they're going to have some fire. They're going to have some fire. Right. All of them. So. <laughs> well, Isaac, I think we have to get ready to go over to IG so we can you know, talk about all that other stuff that happened. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, I think you are right. <laughs> Let the fire and sparks begin. Exactly. So once again, if you're listening to this and you have not listened to our IG Live, go to our Instagram page and um, look at the Instagram Live that we recorded tonight. Uh, you'll probably enjoy the show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Well, we're going to go ahead and sign off. We'll be back here uh, next week um, to talk about what happened at the Hall of Fame tournament and to also start setting the stage for all of the hard court uh, warm ups. So make sure you join us here. But on behalf of the podcast, this has been your boy Bryce. And this is your boy Isaac. And we are Brothers on Tennis. Everyone, be well. Bye.